and welcome to Topaz Labs Video AI Tutorials. Today I will share a few tips and tricks when using Video AI. Let's begin. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in a clip. Here's one of a small dog. Okay. Now I'm just going to do something simple. I'm going to just scale twice the size just to get something going on. And I'm going to just throw Proteus, which is a nice general um, AI model that's for most videos. It does a great job in low lighting, bright lighting. It's a, a nice tool. This is a small clip, so I'm just going to render out the entire thing. OK, great. When you're on the single view, um, you may not know you are able to toggle with the original and the current one by just clicking and holding. So the new version you can see I have some details here. Let's go to the first frame. So here I'm going to click and hold and it reveals what the footage looked like before. I'm going to let go and it shows the upscale and whatever enhancements is going on. A little clue is on the right hand, lower right hand side. You can see the final scale and if I was to click and hold, it shows the original. But obviously if you just click, you can see the original quality versus the new one. So that is the single view toggle. At default, recover detail is set to 20. Um, if you were to adjust this and, you, and forget what it was, you could just double click and this will bring you to the original setting. Um, same thing with add noise. If you change the parameter, but you wanted to bring it back to default, you should just be able to double click that and it'll take you back to the original default settings. This is not necessarily true if you were to enable parameters as this is based on what the automatic settings are. So double clicking on the knob could get you to the original default setting in many cases. Say you want a custom format. All you need to do is go to custom resolution and here you just type it in. So we'll say 1920 and you can see that it'll update on the side of what that format would be. Um, if you unlock it, you can go ahead and type in if you want to make any sort of adjustments and then it prioritizes if you want it based on the width or the height or the overall scale. So that is how you get custom resolution. So this frame rate is coming in at 29.97 frames per second. And if you wanted to change this, you could just click on the carrot here and it'll reveal the drop down menu. And there are many, many options here. However, if you want to make a selection that doesn't exist here by picking something and then highlighting and typing in something weird like 65. There you go, 65 frames per second. Now, it doesn't always work if it's over original, but if you select a number and then highlight delete, you could type this in 66. There you go, 66 frames per second. Now, this also works for slow motion. If there's something here, but you don't necessarily want a whole number of how many times you want to slow down you can let's see I believe even at none you can type this one in yep so we'll just say 3.4 times there it is 6.7 times okay now you'll notice there's this blue highlight this notifies you that you're able to type in here However, there is a limit of how many times you can slow something down. And here I believe it's 17, so we'll give that a try. And it's red, so it's not going to work. 
um, and once you click it, it automatically gets to the next thing. So that is how you could have a custom frame rate. Now let's say, let's say you have a client that wants you to export a specific range and you have those time codes. For this example, we'll just put some numbers in. If you know what those numbers are and that you want to export and just work on those, uh, that time code, you could just type that in here. So I'm just going to hit four just so we can see what that is. By me hitting enter, it'll move the playhead to that spot and I'll put in my first mark in and then I'll go to the next one. This is a very short clip. I'm going to switch this to 12. Okay, and then that will be my ending point. There we go. So now you'll only have to worry about this section for any sort of enhancement and exports. Now to explain recover detail, essentially this is a threshold. So this, it's defaulted at 20. If you think about it as a mix of how much of the original you want to bring in any of those details, I tend to leave this at zero because I don't want to usually bring in any original compression, artifacts, anything like that. Anything I'm doing, I'm purposely trying to enhance. But if you are at a point where the enhancement is quite strong, and you need to return a little bit of that source, then that's where you start bringing this in. Now this won't completely, even though it's at 100, it won't completely bring the original source through, but it's the strength of how much detail it's gonna be bringing back. So hopefully that makes sense. Now for stabilization, if you have in particular, if you have an old film, telecine has been done not frame by frame, but through a projector on a screen, on a wall or something like that, where you have that flickering, it is best not to apply jittery motion or rolling shutter in stabilization. You're gonna wanna keep that off. The flickering is actually, it fights with this and it sometimes gives undesired results. And at the strength, I would not go too strong on it either. Start somewhere around 20, to, so that way the stabilization is still being applied, but it's at a good number where you can kind of see if you need a little bit more or a little bit less on the stabilization and then just move from there. But I would not recommend rolling shutter or jittery motion when it comes to that specific situation with the flickering telecine over a wall straight from an old projector. If you are running low on resources and you're having trouble with the tools or the system in general, one thing you can do is go to File, Preferences, and in Processing, there's a section called Max Memory. This is where you could start bringing this down a little bit. Start at somewhere like 50 to see if that'll help. Normally 100 would be fine if your computer and resources have enough memory. If it works fine, then you don't need to ever adjust this. So it's defaulted here. But if you need to, you can reduce the amount of memory that's dedicated to the program here. So I'm bringing this clip. It is already a 4K UHD resolution. Say I want to upscale this two times, so it's now at 8K. I'm going to go ahead and try rendering here. I have it set to five frames. That's good enough for this example. And I get this error, which is displayed here, here, and here. So you know there's, there's definitely a problem. Whenever you see this error, the number one thing is just to look at codec settings. And it's normally because there is some sort of parameter that the codec is not accepting. And in this case, it's the format. Here it tells us the max size for our H.264 codec is 4K. We are trying to export or preview an 8K uh, video. 
So clearly this codec will not work. One that will work is H.265. It allows, I believe, a maximum of 8K. So let's go ahead and render that. And it is moving through, so that codec changing is working. And there it is. That concludes our tips and tricks. Thanks for joining me on another Topaz Labs video AI tutorial and have fun enhancing those videos.